Hi, oh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about this sweet, sweet laser cutter from China, also known as, you know, K40. You'll see people calling them the K40 laser. Don't know why. It doesn't say K40 anywhere on the case. Uh, I just call it, you know, 40 watt Chinese laser cutter. If you search online for that, you'll get a lot of hits. A lot of them will look pretty much like this. You might see the, uh, the power panel tends to change around a little bit. They'll have different knobs, different displays and so on, but... Generally, they're all pretty much the same. And they all have the same uh, kind of little caches that come with them. These are pretty well documented online. And I, I, I knew about these before I bought it, but I, I figured it was worth it anyways. So I'll give you a quick look inside and just show you some of the things that uh, you may want to look out for if you are going to buy something like this. So one of the most notable things that, you know, kind of comes with the package of the laser cutter is this fan so you get this big long blue pipe it's about I don't know a meter and a half you get this uh, kind of fan body that has a plug on it and the fans actually in this housing and well the, the problem with the thing is I'll just bend over the tripod here is that it doesn't actually fit on the back of the machine properly so you can see where that the exhaust hole there is like a tiny rectangle and look at the size of this it clearly doesn't, uh, you know, they're not made for each other. So it slots in, it's sitting off. If you want, you can tape it up a bit closer to the uh, the housing. And also this panel here is part of the, uh, it's the laser tube. So if you want to access the laser tube for whatever reason, you've got to take off the the fan housing. So, you know, if, if you were to fix it, like use glue or whatever to, hold it to the case and that wouldn't really be a great solution uh, because then you wouldn't be able to access the laser tube if, if it ever broke or something but that is the laser tube there um, you can see it has a hose coming in the far end there and one coming out the near end and all of that is wired back to that uh, aquarium pump there just thrown into like I don't know two liters of water or so and that's you just plug in the aquarium pump and away it goes the, the water actually goes through the inside of the tube and then back out, so it cools it that way. Just having a quick look at the front panel, you've got a current indicator from zero to 30 milliamps. Um, and you know, when the laser is firing, you'll see that you know jumping up and down. This knob here is the current regulation. So you know if you're cutting plywood, you'll set it up a bit higher. If you're cutting acrylic, whatever, it'll it, you can you can set your, your beam current that way. But one thing that this didn't come with was this this dial around here so I could like know where the dial was. So now I, I made that an Inkscape and printed it out and cut it around the dial. So now I can be like, you know, to cut plywood, it has to be at 60% power at five millimeters per second cut speed. And it works out pretty well that way. So I can actually record, you know, how well a certain setting worked. Uh, current indication on a laser switch is like, a hard on off switch for the laser test switch is to test fire so if the laser is activated over here and you press that it should just turn on and off and then that's the on off for the actual machine itself uh, yeah so that's it well, having a quick look inside the actual cutting area not a whole lot to it you've got this bit moves that way and uh, where's the other bit oh yeah this bit moves this way and combining the two you can cut shit out it's class and then this is your exhaust uh, as you can see the piece of wood i'm fitting didn't fit so you can kind of force it like to get that out or to be a pain in the hole it's like just about so it says the coating area is 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters it is roughly that it might be a bit more like that that square there is nowhere near 20 by 30 centimeters i don't know what it is but i've never used it I just generally throw the stuff in and cut away. As you can see, I've made a total balls of the cutting area. There's loads of stuff down the bottom there, but Asher look. Um, and this thing has a spring on it. it. Makes a horrible noise whenever you use it, and the spring looks like a piece of shit to be honest with you. So like, I wouldn't really use that because I mean, dang, and it only goes that far back. Like, so whatever you're cutting has to be that size. And it has to fit in there so pretty impractical i just throw the thing on top oh so just a quick look inside this front panel here uh you know there's loads of space i don't really know what the crack is of that i think the chinese lads would be trying to get this thing as small as possible cheaper to ship and all that but 
I don't know. Uh, so there you have your power supply. Looks like a pretty typical, I don't know, like one you'd see in a computer or that. And back down here, you have your uh, driver board. Over here, you've got your USB cable, plugs into the computer. And it's got all the, the good stuff on there that interfaces, drives the steppers, controls the laser, so on. Um, over here, that's the cables going to your steppers. That's basically it. And over here, there's a random hole. I'm not sure what it's for. Maybe it's a ventilation hole. Who knows? Uh, there's also a lot of other random holes just down there, if you can see them. No idea what the crack is. There's actually a fan. Oh, this is going to be awkward. One second. Um, yeah, there's a fan in the back there as well. So here's some of the stuff I cut out. That is Iron Man uh, cut into just paper or like slightly thicker than paper cardboard. Just showing that, you know, the software that comes with it. The older software couldn't do vector coding and raster engraving, but the new ones can. This does it fine in a Corel draw or whatever you call it. Um, and with Inkscape as well, it's pretty easy to like find the outline of an image and set which bits you want to engrave. It's, it's not too bad. Here's another pattern. I cut out of cardboard pretty intricate and cool um, I also cut out some gears you know stuff like that so it can it can do what you'd expect a laser cutter to do you know it's pretty cool and I also have a lot of acrylic but I haven't got around to cutting any of it yet I've been really busy so we'll see what it can do it's pretty cool so the software that comes with the laser cutter, you have two options. One is called Laser D or W, and the other one is called Corel Laser. I'm pretty sure they're both pretty similar. They might be based off the same programs or something, but I found that Laser D or W can't accept as many file formats to import into it, um, whereas the Corel Draw Laser plugin that you get is pretty flexible. It accepts loads of different formats and stuff, and um, yeah, it's just way better. So I recommend using the Corel Draw plugin if you if you have access to it. And over on the right here we have Inkscape, um, and Inkscape can actually generate a load of cool stuff. Like, see right here we've got a a three D globe. Uh, you've got some spire graphs, a uh, crazy graph of I think it's cosine sine or something, and um, crazy geometric type stuff. Uh, for this one, I'm just, I want to cut this shape out, just for no reason at all, for demonstration. So, I'll just show you how easy it is with Inkscape and with Corel Draw. They seem to go, go together pretty well. I can just hit Control c or you know, right-click, click Copy, come over to the left, and paste it in. Boom. It's now in Corel Draw. It's pretty good. And in this Corel plugin, I'm not sure if you can see up the top right of my screen, you can just click Cutting. And you're greeted with this window. And this means this is your cutting window. So the image here is what's well, it's actually going to cut out and you can move it. So if you can hear the laser cutter moving there, it's actually the laser head moving. Oh shit, I went too far. So you can set it to wherever you want. Um, I'll set it about here. All right, so the laser is on. I'm setting the power to 60% because I know that works quite well on this plywood to cut through it. Um, I'm just going to go over to Corel and click print and it should work away. Oh, I'll leave the door open. Why not? Oh, I forgot the exhaust doesn't work when this is up. Shit. Sorry, dudes. Had smoke coming out. I guess I could put the phone in there. Just give me a sec.
kind of broke it when I was pushing out all the little pieces of plywood just because, you know, I maybe 60, I didn't quite set it to 60. I set it a bit before 60% beam power, so it wasn't like quite strong enough, but hey, it's pretty cool anyways. I broke it here and here, but yeah, it would have been nice. I can always do it again. So here's the shape again, cut from 3 mil acrylic. Turned out pretty well. Um, uh, I made two of them after the plywood one because the first one I forgot to set it to inside out so I cut the outside shape and then the shape fell through so I couldn't cut out all the inside bits. There's a setting in Corel Draw to cut from the inside out so it starts at the very inside of the shape and cuts out so it won't fall through on you. Uh, yeah, it turned out pretty well I think. It's pretty cool.